Our top story, the schedule for the 2023 ICC Men's ODI World Cup is finally out. And the big news is that Pakistan will travel to India for the marquee event after initially threatening to boycott the biggest tournament in the sport. India and Pakistan have not played a bilateral series since 2012 and only face each other in multi-team events. Pakistan did travel to India for the T20 World Cup back in 2016, but have not toured the country since. This is due to the frosty relationship between the neighbours owing to Pakistan's backing of terrorist groups. India's refusal to travel to Pakistan for the Asia Cup this year over security concerns triggered the latest dispute, with Pakistan claiming that it would not participate in this showpiece ICC event. However, the stalemate was resolved when Pakistan agreed to split matches for the Asia Cup with Sri Lanka, where India will play its games. The friction led to a delay in the announcement of the World Cup schedule. Schedules for the 2015 and the 2019 ODI World Cups were released a year in advance. But it has finally been released and the highly anticipated match between the arch-rivals will take place on the 15th of October in Ahmedabad. The 1992 champions will begin their campaign against Australia in Chennai on the 11th of October. It is understood that if India qualify for the semi-finals, their knockout game will be held in Mumbai. Unless their opposition is Pakistan, in which case the game will be played in Kolkata. The final of the World Cup will be held at the Narendra Modi Cricket Stadium in Ahmedabad, which also hosts the tournament opener between 2019 finalists England and New Zealand on the 5th of October. Joining us for more on this is our sports editor Digvijay Singh Dio, who is joining us uh, from New Delhi. Also joining us is Anas Malik from Islamabad. Uh, Digvijay, to you first, the finals on the 19th of November, but the big ticket clash, of course, India versus Pakistan on the 15th of October. I'm sure you're planning to watch at least one of those matches. Well, uh, you and I can actually make plans to watch all the matches in case we manage to get ICC accreditations. I, in fact, told Anas that uh, he should be here for the India-Pakistan game at least. Because, listen, the, the schedule of the ICC World Cup is released at least a year in advance. That's exactly how it happened for the 2015 World Cup in Australia and the 2019 World Cup in England. But obviously, tensions between India and Pakistan leading to this delay. Just three months to go. Just three months to go, uh, Rohit. So, uh, but the big news here is this. India, uh, the host country, will be playing in nine out of ten cities which are hosting the Cricket World Cup. They're going to be 46-day tournament, 48 matches in all. And uh, Australia, are, after India, going to be travelling to eight cities all over India. And Pakistan are going to be playing in five cities. And obviously, as you said, 15th of October, India versus Pakistan... One good thing, one big departure from the past ICC events is that India and Pakistan are not going to start off by playing each other. The fact that they have been playing only multilateral tournaments like the World Cup, the T20 World Cup or events like the Asia Cup meant that those bodies used to put that match as the first to sort of, you know, ensure broadcast deals, broadcast revenue, sponsorship revenue to build up the hype. But the World Cup starts with England and uh, New Zealand. The two teams which played that thrilling final in 2019 at Lodz. And then India-Pakistan happens on the 15th of October. The grand final back to Ahmedabad on the 19th of November. The two semi-finals, both of which have reserved days, are going to be played in Mumbai and Kolkata. Uh, let's go across to Anas Malik, who is our Pakistan Bureau Chief. Anas, uh, what's the reaction in Pakistan to this? A uh, lot of back and forth between the PCB, the Pakistan Cricket Board, the Indian Board, the BCCI, and of course the ICC. Is this a win-win situation for all three sides? Well, Degreji, we've just heard from the Pakistan Cricket Board a short while back while we were setting up for that live. And the statement from the Pakistan Cricket Board says, and I quote, uh, the PCB requires the government of Pakistan's clearance for any tour to India, including the match venues. We are liaising with, with our government for guidance, and as soon as we hear from them, 
we will update the event authority that is the ICC. This position is consistent to what we had told the ICC a couple of weeks ago when they shared with us the draft schedule and sought our feedback. This is what the PCB Director for Communication Samuel Hassan Burney has just issued in a statement. So. Pakistan's fate of traveling to India is still in a limbo, uh, particularly because, uh, as the statement says, that it is to do with government's clearance. Uh, with the first match, you rightly mentioned, hang we've on seen on that on, a history, on. be that be the 2003 on. World Cup between Pakistan and India. Uh, hang on, so this is breaking news. Yeah. You are saying that despite the schedule being released by the ICC, Pakistan has not committed to touring India for this World Cup. Is that what the PCB position is? Just reiterate that for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. The PCB in a statement has said that PCB requires the government of Pakistan's clearance for any tour to India, including the match venues. We are liaising with our government for guidance, and, for guidance and as soon as we hear something from them, we will update the event authority, the ICC. This position is, in, is consistent to what we had told the ICC a couple of weeks ago when they had shared with us the draft schedule and sought our feedback. This is uh, the statement has been issued by PCB Director of Communications Samuel Hassan Burney. Now, I'll just walk you through the events because when it comes to India-Pakistan, we've usually seen that last-minute clearances have been done, be that be the 2016 World Cup in India, where just four days prior to the event, the Pakistani given, go, government had given the nod to the Pakistani cricket team to travel to India, and then they had boarded that flight via Dubai, via Abu Dhabi, uh, and landed in India. Uh, in fact, uh, with even when it comes to match venues, I remember the Pakistan versus India 2016 World Cup uh, 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 match, the 320 World Cup match was scheduled in Dharamsala, but the Pakistani side had insisted to have it moved and eventually the match was moved from Dharamsala to Kolkata where Pakistan had lost. Uh, we had seen that that quite of a spell by Mohammad Amir uh, uh, after his return, uh, Pakistan's left arm uh, pacer at that point of time. And the then opposition leader who later, later happened to have been the Prime Minister as well, Imran Khan, had attended that very match in person. So this political clearance uh, is subjected. What we understand is that this decision is usually taken well very later, quite later, towards the end of, towards, uh, nearer towards the event. Uh, and the latest most example is of these SAF Games Football Championship. Uh, 21st is when it began in Bengaluru in India. And 17th of June or the 16th of June is when the Pakistani government had given the nod to the Pakistani football team. Uh, the NOC was issued that they can travel to India. So while, as we speak, there is no commitment to the ICC by the Pakistani side on official grounds because the government is yet to communicate. It is understood that nearer to the event, such events are not given a miss, at least by the government of Pakistan. And uh, going back to the political aspect to it, cricket is something that unites. This is an election year in Pakistan. So irrespective of whosoever is in power, be that be the interim government, or be that be the political government that is currently in power, uh, the Shehbaz Sharif government, they would not want to miss people when when it comes to an, uh, uh, a game as important as cricket, which is seen as a life and death situation but uh, across Anas, the border. Anas, Anas you know, we, we were talking about this just a short while back and you were, you were mentioning the sort of back and forth between the uh, PCB and the BCCI and the ICC over the 2025 ICC event in Pakistan. Is the government of Pakistan willing to forfeit matches? Because if you look at it, you look at the schedule closely, as I mentioned uh, to Rohit, India play in nine venues out of ten, Australia play in eight, Pakistan seemingly have got their way and they are playing in only five venues and all these venues are traditional sort of grounds in Indian cricket. You know, the, you're looking at Ahmedabad which is scheduled to host the India Park game or Bengaluru or Chennai. These are all venues, Kolkata as well, where they've played games. Do you think that the PCB is uh, willing, uh, it, it will be in, in a big soup if the government of Pakistan says you can't go. Because we all know that a lot of revenue of the PCB comes from these ICC events. And Pakistan Cricket Board stands to gain close to $35 million a year based on the broadcast rights from these ICC events. Well, the history says the history is an indicator that for such events, we haven't seen Pakistan forfeiting or opting out to play from it. And uh, while, as I said, because, because of the situation at hand, uh, no government 
would or no authority would want to give a not that much in uh, in advance irrespective of whatever the optics would be so that is the reason the pakistani side and this the need to give this statement uh, by the pakistan cricket board arose that uh, where they have clarified that they are awaiting a not from the government uh, and we we previously spoke as well that the three time the uh, three times this uh, schedule announcement was postponed or delayed because of pakistan's uh, inability to commit uh, to the venues that had been pro proposed in the draft case schedule with that being said the other problem is the other uh, aspect to that is that pakistani side would want to give this semblance that they would want to play irrespective of the situation uh, of the location but uh there are there are riders that are attached to it unfortunately even when it comes to a game of cricket uh way which should be away from politics but okay, unfortunately okay, let's, let's there, the there are riders that are attached to it moment. uh what we un let's keep the politics away from yeah. a moment this is what the official pcb yeah, so reaction the pakistani, is the pakistani the pakistani pakistani cricket boards say? the fans are absolutely excited the fans are absolutely excited as i said in in the 2011 world cup the, in the semi final 3000 fans were issued visas uh, uh upon getting tickets uh 3000 of them in just a span, a span of about 48 hours so largely speaking there is this general sense of excitement for an india pakistan match for the fact that pakistani a team will be playing a world cup that too in the neighborhood that too in the region uh, so that is what the excitement is about uh, the excitement is about for a for a show off or a showdown between virat kohli and babar azam the excitement is about for a showdown between virat kohli and shahin shah afridi uh, whether or not uh, hasan ali gets to play gets to be selected or uh, whether uh, uh, whether shadab khan continues with his magical spell from the 2017 champion trophy uh, they would be pakistan would want to continue this semblance of its winning streak uh, they would wa they would ha want to give this semblance of having an upper hand because of that last victory over india with 152 for 0 uh, which pakistan won by about 10 wickets uh, then again uh, uh, the, the 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 overall sentiment would be uh, the the mood would be very positive the fans are positive about it the fa the fans would want to see the pakistani cricket team participating the fans would want to see a thriller of a clash uh, they would want uh, pakistan to break their uh, taboo of not b beating india in a world cup match be that be the 2003 the last time i remember uh, uh, was the 2003 uh, uh, 50 over patch uh, in uh, in south africa in the south africa world cup which pakistan had lost and sachin tendulkar was the star of the match at that point of time in 2003 so pakistan would want to break this new this younger generation pakistan cricket team would want to break that taboo that stigma that is attached okay. to it that they have not beaten india in a in a 50 over world cup game okay. and that is what i think they their focus would entirely be on and that is what the fans would expect as well okay uh, i'm just go this was a bit out of your comfort zone i'm actually going to get you back into your comfort zone you know india pakistan odi world cups india have always won since 1992 the pakistan have never won a match but uh, at the t20 world cup as you meant, pointed out in 2021 it was a 10 wicket win uh, just one question uh, anas cricket diplomacy is a term that is used especially for india and pakistan do you see a point going forward that that could come forward you know i remember the 2011 world cup semi final at mohali i was there for that game and uh, the pak then prime minister of pakistan yeah. came for that match uh, parvez musharraf came to delhi for a game in 2005 you know i remember when india toured pakistan 2004 uh, parvez musharraf was there at the rawalpindi stadium as well zia ul haq has come to india uh, in 1984 do you think that that this 87, cricket 87 cricket world cup you know uh, that the cricket world cup is is a stage where Uh, as you said cricket diplomacy uh, could be seen do you think that uh, if the pakistan government takes an earlier decision that all this can also lead to a much more improved relation on both sides of the border well cricket is something that unites irrespective uh, dikwije and uh, you rightly mentioned uh, the history 
Uh, in fact, I, if I remember correctly, we had uh, a senior Indian official as well back when, in 2004 when the Indian cricket team was visiting Pakistan for the series. And I believe it was the test series, if my memory jogs correctly. Uh, you rightly mentioned the 2011 Mohali semi-final where the then Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani had traveled to, traveled to India and sat down and saw the match. Of course, Pakistan lost that match. Uh, even, in fact, the last World Cup, 2021, the T20 World Cup, uh, and I can say this on authority based on information, the Pakistani Prime Minister was scheduled, the then Prime Minister was scheduled to travel uh, in case uh, if the Pakistani side had made it to the semi-finals. Uh, uh, that, uh, and, but unfortunately, that World Cup was moved uh, due to the COVID uh, scenario, COVID scenario to the UAE, but it, was, it continued to be hosted by uh, the Indian side. So cricket is a factor that unites. And cricket diplomacy can possibly pave way. You rightly mentioned Ziaul Haq coming over for the 84 or the 87 World Cup, as what the history books tell us, uh, and, uh, and witnessing that match. So cricket diplomacy has been that icebreaker. In fact, when in 2004, uh, Pakistan and India did try to normalize the relation, it was cricket that was the uniting factor. The, Pakistan, the Indian cricket team had visited Pakistan. I remember watching that match in Karachi, here in Karachi, where Pakistan had lost that match to India by about six runs in Zaman, trying to, uh, trying to put that last hit. Uh, one ball, six runs, Just trying to, to pull out you, pull I Sharjah, was, I was there uh, for that uh, in game, Karachi. Anas. That clearly did not... I was there for that game. Ashish Nehra defended... Yes, exactly. So, over. Pakistan had lost... Yes. Exactly. So, so you remember that very well as well. I was there. I was there as a spectator. I was there as a student, as a spectator. So, uh, in, in, where in Zamam tried to pull a, a Sharjah in Karachi, but that clearly did not work out. Ashish Nehra bowling wicket to wicket, line to line, and doing some exceptional uh, fielding by the uh, due to some exceptional fielding by the uh, Indian cricket team. They rightly won that match. With that being said, I think largely the focus. Of this uh, of this event would be the India Pakistan clash. Uh, you've you've uh, mentioned that the jinx Pakistan would want to break is the fact that they've never never beaten India in a 50 over World Cup game. Uh, and uh, to my memory, the 2003 World Cup uh, game for, of Pakistan and India, where uh, Wakar Yunus was captaining Wakar Yunus or Wasim Akram, I believe, was captaining Pakistan, and Sachin Tendulkar was were captaining India. And Sachin Tendulkar were the star of the match at that point of time. Uh, and Pakistan had had quite gotten quite of a beating. So Pakistan would would want to break that jinx, would want to go ahead and give this semblance of being the victor. Uh, they have some uh, some sort of a consolation or a pat on their back with the last victory in a 50-over game uh, in an ICC event, that is the 2017 ICC Champions Trophy, if you correct me if I'm wrong on that, uh, because uh, uh, Pakistan had won that game, the ICC Champions Trophy in 2017. And after, since then, so Pakistan would want to go with their heads up with a pat on their back that the last game that they had played in a 50 over multilateral event they had won so they would want to give a walk in with that confidence but scenarios change this is not 2017 this is 2023 that we're talking about uh, you don't have a young Sh uh, Shadab, uh, Shadab Khan uh, you have a considerably experienced Shadab Khan you don't have the all dependable Shoaib Malik in the, uh, 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 in the squad anymore he's opting or he's trying to opt his way out of uh, for retirement you ha don't have um, you don't have an energetic Muhammad Amir anymore a young energetic Muhammad Amir anymore you've got this new uh, 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 this new uh, combination of Naseem Shah and Shaheen Shah Afridi and Haris Rauf. Uh, three genuine paces, as they said, with Harif, uh, Haris Rauf being an exception, somebody who rose from uh, tape ball cricket and then uh, gave trials, uh, got selected, gave trials, and eventually rose to the ranks of the Pakistani cricket team uh, to the point Anas. where uh, he has now gotten, uh, he's now playing with the red ball, uh, red ball as well. Digbaja. Yeah, Anas, you know, just because, you know, I was just noticing the passion in your voice. I, and, and I think that's what cricket does. These marquee tournaments, you know, I, I remember the, the 2021, 22, in fact, last year, the uh, T20 World Cup in, uh, in, 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 in Melbourne. The uh, India chasing down that Pakistan score with Virat Kohli winning that match for India. But the abiding memory for me from that game is India-Pakistan fans dancing outside the MCG to the tunes of Pasudi, the song uh, from Ali Sethi. Uh, do, you, do you think that, you know, in India and in Pakistan, this match is built up?
the hype. You know, this is the game. You know, and both sides of the border. It said that oh, you win this match, you don't win the World Cup. That's uh, that's okay. The the players now say that an India Pakistan match, they don't believe the hype. That's what the Indian team always says that we treat it as just another game. It doesn't matter to us. The bigger picture, winning the tournament is what matters to us. Pakistan have done well in ICC events. They reached the final last time in in Australia as well. Do you think the people of Pakistan could then start putting pressure on the government that uh, there's no point saber rattling? We want to see this contest and we want people to come across and experience the World Cup in India. That's what it's all about ultimately, and that's what you mentioned. In 2025, there will then be a chance for Indian fans to go to Pakistan and and see that ICC event. Well, in fact, people in the government they themselves want this to happen. They would not want to be seen as a roadblock in a good game, in a good sporting game, and especially when it comes to India-Pakistan. There is a lot of public pressure, both on the sports, uh, on uh, the uh, the the sports stars, and on the government as well, irrespective of the location that is that that it is being held. So yes, the people would be exerting pressures on both the players and the government. the players that in in pakistan the general perception is that our world cup is a win with india irrespective you lose the world cup you win the world cup you get out of in the semi finals you get out in the qualifiers it does not matter as long as you win a game with india you you won the world cup for us that's what the perception and general perception in in uh, uh, is in pakistan irrespective of what the what the players would want to give the semblance that uh, it's just another game no it's not just another game the pakistani side uh, or the fans treat it as a matter of literally a matter of life and death and i am not exaggerating on that we've seen that happen uh, when in 2014 when shahid afridi yes. uh, went on uh, to hit those two uh, two sixes on those two balls uh, for the asia cup uh, cup in in bangladesh uh, the excitement Uh, the jubilations which erupted from uh, Karachi to Lahore to Quetta to Peshawar to even to the smallest to the regions across Pakistan, you could feel that the passion could be felt when in 2017 Pakistan won that Champions Trophy yes. in a 50-over game uh, at the Lords uh, against uh, India. That was felt in 2021. That became quite of uh, quite of a joke as well, and we saw a lot of memes when Pakistan won against India. Uh, why ten wickets? That was felt. So it's when the players would say that it's just another game. No, it's not just another game. When it comes to an India-Pakistan clash, yes. and the Pakistani, uh, the people of Pakistan would de- definitely be exerting and forcing the government to make sure that the team travels. to india and the politics to that is kept aside and it's kept at bay so that the people could get to witness uh, this this game and the beauty of the game that unites cricket yes. as i said as well is a uniting factor it does not it is something that unites people all across be that be in india and be that be in pakistan digvijay okay on that note anas malik as i uh, mentioned to you half an hour back i hope you get your visa and we watch that india pakistan game together on the 15th of October in Ahmedabad. Thank you for this, and keep tracking this. And hopefully, we get that contest, and uh, and cricket diplomacy ultimately wins. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, from uh, Karachi with that perspective.